No, that's a no. No, I'm to you guys are ready? Yeah. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I call this meeting of Pam Traffic City Council to order. Today is uh, February 28, 2023, and it's 7.02 p.m. Would the clerk call the rules, please? Uh, Councilman Chowdhury. Present. Councilman Mahmoud. Yes. 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 Councilman M
state priority. Um, they're becoming more organized. And the way that they're looking at the route is that we're all in this together, right? It's not one community in this alone and solely responsible for funding um, portions of it. The city of Detroit has been leading um, planning, you know, fundraising to date with the intention of creating funding opportunities for all Jolo Greenway cities. Uh, they did fund a, they being Detroit, funded a framework plan which was released in 2021. Um, and then that has also led to these larger organizations being formed. Now, in the past, what I heard, there may have been some community coordination with, with officials here at Hamtramck, um, uh, business owners, community members, um, but these people may not have, they may not be in the same positions today, um, and uh, recent sentiment is, isn't, hasn't been heard. Um, and that is where the like, we're, we're doing this work to prepare for a full, you know, public engagement process and, and future meetings. So this isn't, uh, this isn't an end point, this is more of the beginning point of how uh, we, can, we can all work together. Um, what I heard, and this is part of what's in the framework plan as well, is that Joseph Campo was considered to be the route, um, considering the connection to Detroit right up on Carpenter, um, and and to the to the south, um, you know, around the curve into Detroit as well, and that that connection brings the most economic you know benefit for downtown Hamtramck. Now that's that's what I've heard, and that's what's in the framework plan. Mm -hmm. But really, um, and then the other piece was that businesses voices businesses voiced a preference um, for a route that would not require reconstructing segments from Holbrook to Knick, because it wouldn't fit right now with the recent streetscape work, because that would affect their parking, and they'd have to um, live through another construction process. <coughs> um, so that's what's been shared from some, uh, uh, the Smith, Smith Group, another firm who worked on the project and did the framework plans, and the city of Detroit so far. Um, now the the, the other piece was that tax funding for bike planes on Joseph Campo um, was secured about 2017, and, and that construction is now complete. So that's the connection to the southern, at the southern end of the road. Um, now, uh, after reviewing community engagement notes, interviews, previous studies, and materials, um, what I'd like to do today is discuss the route options, um, which coordinate with the map on the next page. So this one's a little more difficult to share on the screen, because so. um, it's both pages, but we have some printed. So we can start with the Campo and West Valley route, which is the route that's included in the framework plan, um, which segments of that plan were included in your packet as well. Now the route would be coming up the bike lanes that currently exist on Joseph Campo from the south, um, <coughs> then crossing to the west alley of Joseph Campo to continue up to Kniff, and then reconnecting with, you know, on Joseph Campo to go north. The, um, the opportunity there is that it would bring, right, it, aligns with the goal of bringing people into the downtown to support long to support businesses. In the long term, there's an opportunity to activate um, the, the alley with murals, beautification, um, more pedestrians, um, and also the streetscape and, and beautification north of Kniff as well. It would be the official route, right? Now, um, the challenge, which is what we have to address in this process is how do we share, how do we design that alley to be a shared space for walkers, bike, bike, uh, businesses, bicyclists, um, bike, and, and really garbage, right? Like waste management and, um, and deliveries, the businesses deliveries and other needs. And there are concerns about numerous intersections across the alley that would make it unsafe for commuters. So those are challenges. Those are things that we could work through, that we would have to work through for, for this route option. 
Um, I also included some construction estimates at the bottom. They are very, very preliminary and come from the framework plan estimates, but at least give some, something to compare. Now the second option would be to come up, comp uh, Joseph Campo, have the West Alley really for pedestrians, prioritized for pedestrians as part of the Joe Streamway route, um, but concerns have been raised, right, about <coughs> fast cyclists going through the alley, um, especially those that are coming to the Joe, Joe Lewis Greenway route to ride it, right? They're the ones going 15 to 22 miles an hour. Um, um, they're, they're really there to ride. Um, and if that would uh, create safety concerns there, or likely if they're the type that would just stay on Joseph Campo, um, which would be tight for cyclists, there's not a lot of extra space there for, for um, cars that are parked on the street, then what about giving them an, uh, like a fast route bike lane option um, down one of the other streets, Lumpkin um, or um, uh, um, Brownback. Brown, Brown, thank you. <laughs> or Brownback. Um, now those are fire routes, uh, but, but it gives a fast bike lane a route option. Now the opportunity is that it would be separating your commuter, fast cyclists and pedestrians, uh, would reduce some of the alley congestion and you would extend the benefits of the Joe Lewis Greenway to some of the other residential areas by having, having people pass through. Um, and that could also be a route that connects <coughs> library schools, um, mosques, churches, and, and other non-downtown businesses. The challenge would be the complex intersections with um, you know, Holbrook and Kniff, and then additional stakeholder coordination. So now you're talking about resi residential areas, um, more so than, than just the business areas on Joseph Campo. Um, and construction estimate, prob probably a little higher, and now you're, you're adding additional bike lanes on other streets. Uh, the third option, would be the getting off of Joseph Campo on Connect over to Lumpkin um, and McKay as the official route. Now, it would be bypassing this section of congestion, um, and <coughs> it would avoid the alley complexity, um, potentially less of a parking or business disruption, but it also doesn't achieve the goals that the Joe Lewis Greenway Project and cities have come together um, you know, to achieve, which is bringing people to downtown businesses, um, connecting uh, residents to the most active areas of communities. Um, and this route would not um, prioritize funding for the Joe Lewis Greenway route to other, to your, your downtown streetscape projects, um, which <coughs> have previously been expressed as a, you know, a desire to activate the alleys and, and the streetscape. Um, and realistically, that's a much longer pathway of on-street bike lanes, um, so wouldn't necessarily be a um, funding Okay, I got it. Let's see that. <coughs> so we, we have some business owners here that came, you know, they protesting, the, you know, this greenway uh, because they are saying it's hurting their businesses. And we are in Hampton, as you know, we are a small, tight city, n narrow space, limited parking spaces. And this one came <coughs> and took off some more spaces, parking spots. And so we have a lot of business owners here that I can see they came tonight to speak about that. Mm -hmm. so I don't know if there is a solution that, you so know. I, I can talk a little, about, a little bit about that, Mr. Mayor. So this project, as we've stated, has been an ongoing project for a really long time. Um, I mean, the grant that we have to pay for the services that um, they're providing here alone came all the way from 2017. So, um, and it goes back much further than that. Um, we're here today for the presentation to pretty much talk about Holbrook North and how we're going to handle that. We already have Holbrook South, but that doesn't mean we're done with it neither. 
Um, my hope is today that you would appoint a subcommittee or get a couple volunteers from council that can continue the conversations <coughs> with our contractor for Holbrook North to decide what's best for the community, whether it goes up Joseph Campo Alley, um, veers off completely, goes up Lumpkin, or to what end to where it goes and to what we as a city envision you as council and on behalf of our residents want it to do. Um, that's the point of this presentation. Um, in regards to this section that's already done, um, <clears throat> no one here in this room, I think, had any input into it whatsoever. None of our electeds, none of the administration, nobody. Um, we realize that our business owners are taking exception with it um, because one day it just started to come in and now it's here. Um, I personally, along with the deputy city manager, met with multiple business owners just the other day in regards to this, along with our community and economic development, went out there the other day as well, and we're brainstorming ideas of what we can do to alleviate some of the concerns. The main concern that we see at this point is parking. Um, and there's a couple of steps that we looks to be taking right now, or we're probably going to put some 30-minute parking signs out there to help get some turnover for the businesses, um, specifically for the market, which we know is kind of an in-and-out business, and specifically for the restaurants that want some carry-out business. And we're looking at doing some parking strictly for the businesses as well, maybe some designated. Um, as far as moving the Greenway, um, that would be a long-term solution, but not necessarily out of the question, but we're going to have to have a lot of conversations with people and do a lot more planning. It's not something that could happen overnight. Um, but we are going to have those conversations, and hopefully we can come up with something in that section that will work for everyone moving forward. Um, but tonight, as far as we're concerned here, um, we're looking to see what we're going to do moving forward north of Holbrook. Um, and we're excited about it because there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, as stated, there is a ton of funding for this, which doesn't necessarily mean it's just bike paths. I mean, we potentially could redo our whole, whole cityscape if we do this correctly. Um, there's a lot of planning that needs to be done and a lot of conceptual drawings that need to be done. And we think we can go after a lot of money to potentially even redo infrastructure along with bike lanes. So, um, for now, it's what we have, but we're hoping with council's help to get some solid plans in place and, and move forward from there. Okay, Mr. Okay. Chair. Go ahead. Okay, so all those plans in two square miles, try to bring million, million dollar, is not going to help some of the point that no businessman, nothing. So, we're not going to discuss, we already spent 20 minutes for this one. Uh, we're going to make the subcommittee and community leaders and businessmen, they will discuss that one further. Okay, I will have to talk to council members individually and see who's interested because okay. there are sometimes that we take quick decision and then some people back up. So I'll have individual conversations with you guys and then I'll appoint the subcommittee. Mr. Mayor, yes. if there's some business owners Thank here, you. are you going to listen to their concern maybe? Or? No. They can talk in the public yeah, comment. They can make up a All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next uh, report is the 2022 annual report for the city clerk. Hello. Hi. Do you guys mind if I stay sitting? Yes. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You're okay. No, okay. No problem. Make it short. It's good. Well, let's hear a video. Right. We cannot right. recognize right. you. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Council Mayor, our new city manager. I appreciate everybody's uh, input and everything. I enjoy working here. I love the city, and I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, so this is the 2022 annual report. Uh, first, I'm going to discuss business licenses. Within Hamtramck's tight-knit two-square-mile is a constantly shifting and evolving business community. Businesses with experienced owners and a dedicated customer base continue to thrive post-pandemic. 2022 saw an increase in local entrepreneurs who found new opportunities to invest in the city and build up their brand, surely inspired by the city's changing demographics and a growing demand for new, fresh ideas. In 2022, a total of 128 new business license applications were filed within our office, with this, which is surprisingly down from the 159 businesses who filed in 2021. This number includes brand new businesses as well as any changes of ownership within an existing business. As of February 2023, 121 of those businesses are still active and operating. According to our records, a majority of the new businesses opened during 2022 were residential, commercial, or mixed-use property ownership companies. 
And that's one of the reasons is because we were trying to tackle in the past couple of years getting those business licenses for those uh, landlords and tenants, landlords and business owners. Uh, so we've been pushing those and we've had a lot of those come in and apply for business licenses. A total of 545 business licenses were issued with 497 of those licenses being from the 2022-23 business license year. According to our business license software, 61 businesses were terminated at some point throughout 2022, which is down from the 80 businesses terminated in 2021. Uh, as for elections, uh, you all know that we passed uh, Arabic on our ballots this past year, so we had a successful August and November election with three uh, languages. Uh, successful with only two and a half employees in the clerk's office. So I got to give a round of applause to my Abe Siblani, my deputy, and our election clerk, uh, Barry Malso, for all their amazing work. With the in 2022, the city of Hampshire continued its growth in the number of registered voters. The city registered 1,345 new voters in 2021. There are currently, in 2022, there are currently 4,971 voters listed as permanent absent voters. Uh, voters who wish to be sent an application for the absent voter ballot automatically each election, which that is changing due to Proposal 2 being passed in the November election. Uh, I was currently at an election seminar today discussing all these changes, and to let you guys know a heads up, these changes are going to be expensive, especially with having three languages on our, on our ballots in our elections. Uh, new machines, nine days early voting, they're trying to get rid of uh, applications for the absentee voters. So whoever is on the permanent list automatically gets a ballot without filling out the application, which causes an issue for us having three languages because our applications to vote, my intention was to have a three language application, not application for application for AB ballot. Uh, with this said, if we're sending everybody a ballot, not knowing which language is preferred, it's going to make it a little bit difficult for him trying to pursue this. So the state doesn't even know what we're doing with one language, let alone three languages. So that's why early voting isn't starting until the new February primary next year for the presidential election. Uh, so we're waiting to get more feedback from the, uh, <coughs> the Bureau of Elections in Michigan. Um, these voters account for approximately 35% of registered voters in the city. The total number of voters is 4,107 in Hamtramck. 14. Two, 14. Oh, I'm sorry, what did I say? 4,000. Well, I apologize. 14,107. There were 2,122 voters who participated in the 2022 state primary election. In the primary election, 1,301 voters requested that they were sent absentee ballots in the 22 primary election, and 1,114 of these ballots were returned for counting. 13 of these AB ballots were canceled for rejected or rejected due to voter moving, new jurisdiction being reported as deceased or prior, uh, prior to election day. Um, during the state general election, there were 4,516 voters who participated in that election. 2,100, <coughs> excuse me, 2,119 voters requested and were sent absentee ballots in the general election, and 1,893 of these ballots were returned for counting. 17 of these ballots were canceled, either for rejection due to uh, voter moving to a new jurisdiction, being reported deceased before the election day. Our office continues to refine our procedures, particularly to areas of language assistance for voters who speak Arabic and Bangla. In 2022, our office provided not only Bangla language ballots as required by the law, but also Arabic language ballots for voters who requested them to meet council's goal established in 2021. Additionally, the voters of the state of Michigan adopted Proposal 2, bringing changes to the state election system. These requirements will result in additional spending for staffing due to the increased activity laid out in the law. Items that the clerk's office will be addressing as required, uh, like I said, there'll be a nine-day early voting period. Military and overseas ballots will be counted if postmarked by or on election day. So they're figuring out how to close out the election if we're still going to count ballots that come in late in the mail if they're post dated before the election. Uh, securing polling places and preventing intimidating or harassing behaviors inside uh, the vicinity and in the vicinity of them, as well as continuing to provide a voting opportunity absent practices that have the intent or effect of denying, abridging, interfering with, or unreasonably burdening the fundamental right to vote. We are currently awaiting guidance from the Secretary of State Office as well as the Wayne County Bureau of Elections to guide our implementations of these requirements. 
Uh, last year, in 2022, we had 132 FOIA requests through the clerk's office, and the council brought through 163 resolutions, and we had a total of 10 public hearings. And that's in a nutshell. Thank you. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Next one is the Beautification Commission. No one here is to read that. No, Mr. Mayor. I'm hoping to push that to the next meeting. The uh, presenter got called in the work last minute. All right. Uh, did you have to remove that on addition completion? It's just a proclamation. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next one is the 2022 annual report for the building department. Mr. Mayor, we have John Jackson from McKenna here to present. Good evening, council members, <clears throat> and thanks for the opportunity to come and, and, and speak with you tonight. Um, we, uh, we have a very committed team of professionals in, in the building department. Many of you know uh, Laura Gray and Renata White, who are the faces uh, at the counter in the building department. And uh, we continue to make progress in terms of trying to provide a high level of customer service to the residents and the businesses of Hamtramck helping them navigate what is often a very intimidating and uh, 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 challenging process of making sure that their buildings are safe uh, to live in, safe for their customers, and safe for them to conduct business, uh, business in. But at the end of the day, that's the goal of the building department, is to make sure that people are safe in the buildings here in Hamtramck. So uh, a quick update uh, of last year's activities. The number of building permits was up over last year by approximately 85 permits from about 1,526 permits last year uh, and 1,610 permits this year. Um, so that's uh, the level of activity we've seen over the last two years, which is, is a significant increase over uh, 2019 and 2020, uh, where we were down uh, significantly due to COVID. We've had a couple of large projects, uh, 11347 Joseph Campo, 10200 Conant, and 8801 Conant were commercial projects uh, that resulted in a significant amount of investment in the city of Hantramic and are uh, in the process of being reviewed uh, and, and finalized. With respect to the division of projects, approximately 90% of the permits were people investing in residential buildings in Hamtramck, 10% of the permits, the number of permits, were dedicated to uh, commercial projects. Uh, in terms of the fees collected, you can see on the chart here on the right, uh, the fees collected by the city uh, in 2022 was uh, 410,000, which was, again, a little bit over what was collected last year uh, and again, significantly over what was collected in previous years, again, due to COVID. Uh, the next page shows basically a GIS map uh, of where the permits, uh, commercial and residential permits, were issued. We think that this ability to track these on GIS helps you to see where investment is incurring and maybe where it's not in, in, uh, occurring. And you can see here it's pretty well distributed around the, the uh, city with respect to both residential and commercial. The next map here shows where the commercial uh, permits were. <clears throat> and you can see, of course, they were primarily along the city's uh, commercial corridors, corridors, Joseph Campo, uh, Kniff, Holbrook, and uh, Conant. So uh, again, I think this is a useful <coughs> tool to see where investment is happening in the city. Uh, uh, and seeing that the city's economic development policies are, are actually coming to fruition. One of the other services that uh, the city provides is inspecting uh, non-owner-occupied structures. And what this <coughs> chart in the lower left-hand corner here shows that the number of new uh, non-owner-occupied permits is down this year. And what that suggests to us is that um, we, we are starting to uh, uh, identify all of the rental properties in the city. Obviously, there's still more, but there's fewer and fewer rental properties being added to our inventory of rental properties that are inspected on a regular basis. Uh, we, too, in the building department have been working with the city to make sure that our application forms and so forth are accessible to people uh, with a variety of languages uh, and understanding, 
And so we've updated the building permit forms uh, to reflect the different languages. In terms of the revenue generated by the non-owner occupied uh, uh, permits and, and registrations, again, it reflects the, uh, the number of uh, registrations. It's down a little bit over last year. Again, suggesting that uh, there's a stabilization of, uh, of uh, non-owner occupied units in the city. We continue to look at ways of, of making sure we identify all the non-owner occupied uh, buildings in the city. Again, it's important for the city and the people who live in these units for us to identify those so they can be inspected and make sure that they're safe uh, for people to live in. So this chart here shows the total revenues generated by the city's building department. Uh, you can see overall, the, uh, in 2022, uh, the total revenue was $753,380 generated by the building department, which is up a little bit over 2021, where it was $714,048. Again, a marked increase over and above uh, the two previous years. Um, and one thing I'd point out, given the drastic fluctuation between those years and the last two years, is the city uh, has been able to maintain the same level of service in the building department. There are no uh, long delays for permits, no long delays for inspections. All that is happening on a timely basis, which is critical when the city is trying to encourage investment in the community. Uh, one of the other services that we provide is code enforcement, and no one likes code enforcement, right? Ooh, everyone hates code enforcement. But again, it's important in terms of going out and making sure that this city's building stock is well maintained. Our role in code enforcement is primarily around the buildings. We have other code enforcement professionals here that look outside the building at property uh, related issues. But this chart shows that, again, our major focus has been on identifying rental programs uh, and uh, people doing building uh, activities without permits, uh, fees that are owed, vacant property registration, and so on. So, again, we're out there making sure that um, people are uh, living and conducting business in buildings that uh, meet the uh, minimum safety standards of the state and the community. Uh, <clears throat> this next page basically shows that we continue to be committed to uh, helping people through this process, as I mentioned in the beginning. Um, one of the things that we've done is we've uh, partnered with the city in obtaining uh, the BSNA module that allows people to pay their permit fees online. So they don't have to come into the community, in, into the city hall to, to pay. Uh, it makes it easier for them uh, to make their payments. Uh, it lightens up the amount of traffic uh, at the counter so we can spend more time answering questions for people who are, again, looking to do projects and, and that sort of thing. So. Um, th there's been a lot of improvements over the last uh, couple of years. We continue to look at improvements um, in, in terms of the systems, both in the building department and how we work closely with the city's community and economic development department. Um, uh, I know some of your, uh, your staff is, is currently on leave right now, so we've uh, been fortunate to be able to provide a, sort of an interim uh, replacement in the department to make sure nothing falls through the cracks. Um, before uh, that, that leave, we, we were having meetings with the Community <coughs> Economic Development Department to streamline the process uh, of, of investment, all the way from when someone comes in, kicking the tires to see what the zoning ordinance allows, what the city wants to see in terms of uh, you know, redevelopment, reinvestment in the community, all the way from that point, all the way to when they get their certificate of occupancy through the building <coughs> department. It's, a, it's sort of a, a long road, but um, we've definitely been committed to making that process as smooth as, as possible. And uh, I would definitely like to give a shout out to our whole team. I mentioned Laura and Renata, but we also have uh, you know four inspectors there on a regular basis, day in and day out, as well as a building official there uh, uh, two or three days a week to make sure that uh, we have 
answers for people looking to invest in the city of Hampton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, point of order. Uh, I think Ronan was right earlier here. Also. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we were supposed. You're supposed to do a motion to. Postpone Post the, the beautification? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion. I'll second. Do I have to vote on that? Aye. <coughs> okay. All right, the next one is the Proclamation for Women's History Month. Um, would the clerk read that, please? Since <coughs> Hamtramck Proclamation in recognition of Women's History Month, whereas Hamtramck women of every race, clay, class, and ethnic background have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of our city, state, and nation in countless, retro, countless recorded and unrecorded ways. And whereas Hamtramck women have played and continue to play critical political, economic, cultural, and social roles by constituting a significant portion of our labor force working inside and outside of the home. And whereas in Hamtramck women have played a unique role throughout the history of the nation by providing the majority of the volunteer labor, labor force, and when called upon and manufacturing, I'm sorry, and when called upon the manufacturing labor force. And whereas women were particularly important in the establishment of early charitable philanthropic and cultural <coughs> institutions in Hamtramck and across the country. And whereas American women of every race, class, and ethnic background served as early leaders in the forefront of every major pro progressive social change movement. <laughs> since the United States of America was founded. And whereas women have and continue to serve our country courageously in the military, and whereas American women have been leaders not only in securing their own rights of suffrage and equal opportunity, but also in the abolitionist movement, the emancipation movement, the industrial labor movement, the civil rights movement, and especially the peace movement, which create a more fair and just society for all. And whereas despite these contributions, the role of women in history has been consistently overlooked and undervalued in the literature, teaching, and study of American history. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Hamtramck that March is designated as Women's History Month and call upon the people and institutions of the city to observe March as Women's History Month annually with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. Signed, Mayor Amargalli. Thank you. The next one is uh, <clears throat> next one is the proclamation opposing military aid to all repressive governments around the world, and nobody wants to read that. I'll go ahead and read it. Um, so before <coughs> I read it, a lot of there was a lot of tension around this, and you know it was introduced by. For just transparency, because I keep getting calls from members of the community to explain, thinking that we are doing stuff that are unnecessary. Uh, I think we have done proclamations before for Ukraine. We have done for Poland, mm -hmm. for Yemen, for Bangladesh, and and this is for Palestine. So um, I unfortunately try to modify the language, bring a compromise between the two sides of the council, but it. It didn't work out to accomplish our goal uh, of maintaining peace uh, and, you know, removing tension from the council. So um, at the end, we stick to our values and three things we cannot bargain about or trade with anything else. I personally, three Fs that I keep always saying, faith, family, and freedom. Freedom, when we say freedom, not only my personal freedom, but every nation is freedom around the world. Every individual, individual is freedom. We support freedom uh, of every nation to live free of uh, occupation and uh, free of repression and prosecution. So um, this proclamation, uh, I will read it. Uh, City of Amtrak proclamation opposing military aid to all repressive governments. 
Whereas the city of Hamtramck recognizes the right of every country and every person to exist in peace and security, and whereas the city of Hamtramck believes that the Palestinian people should enjoy the right of self-determination that comes with having a free, peaceful, and secure homeland for their own, and whereas the city of Hamtramck stands against occupation of any country and support the right of every occupied nation to gain freedom, sovereignty, and in independence, and whereas the United States military aid to foreign government has enriched defense contractors at the expense of struggling cities like Hamtramck while threatening the safety and security of people all around the world. And, uh, and now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the city of Hamtramck oppose military aid to all repressive governments around the world. All right, we move to the next item, addition deletions. Any additional deletions to the agenda? All right, no additional deletions. We move to the public comment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is from Carrie Beth Lasley, uh, Norwalk Hamtramck. I'm sending you a public. Oh, let me start with the public comment. This comment is in response to you, including a proclamation brought to you by an anti-Semite. I'm certain you have all had time to consider how to frame your support as not anti-Semitic, but when it is brought to you by an anti-Semite, your new excuse does not fly. I have been honestly pleasantly surprised by the attention that this has received around town. I would like to congratulate you all for acting exactly how Islamophobes have said the first majority Muslim council would act. It embarrasses me, but clearly not you, or this resolution would not be up for consideration. As a council, your actions have driven off a colleague and now choose to represent us as petty, hateful people. It does us as Hamtramckens and Muslims everywhere a great disservice. A great disservice. I hate to admit that Islamophobes are right about you, but maybe we should all be closing our bars and preparing for Sharia law because you are all playing right into the stereotype. It's no longer funny when people say it because of this. Ben Baird, if you are listening, I'm now ready to walk you through Katrina's exit message. Thank you, Carrie Beth Lasley. Again, Carrie Beth Lasley. Also curious as to why we are paying Max Garbarino almost $20,000 above the max salary advertised when we could have attracted better candidates with this higher salary. Hmm. Uh, this one is from Ali, Ahmad Ali on Home Street. I would like to voice my concern for the resignation of Councilwoman Amanda because she didn't want to support the anti-Zionist resolution. I would also like to put some blame on the rest of the council for not specifying the Zionist state by name. Since she left, why not add the name back in? Not like she will care anyway. I would like to also voice my concern for an upcoming agenda item where the city is planning to give a West Bloomfield resident and works as a lawyer as a tax break on his property that he neglected for over a decade on Joseph Campo. This sends the wrong message to owners on Joseph Campo that they should let their building break down and then you can fix it up and get tax-free rewards. The owner can easily sell the building for double what they bought it for if they can't fix it and the new owners will fix it for them. The property also shows that he applied and got a rental certificate approved and those don't get given unless the place is rentable. So I don't know how the place is in bad shape. The city also says the building is in bad shape yet he has new electricity plumbing on the top floor. This whole thing is crazy. Finally, I would like to speak about the animal ordinance. We have many people leaving food plates out in the alley feeding the cats and is left overnight. This brings roaches and rats. Rats, please increase the code enforcement to ensure the people don't leave food outside for more than the allowed two hours. Please keep him traffic clean. Thank you. Um, and for Lynn Blasey, I'm just going to... Play the Lynn Blasey role of asking you for the additional minute just in case. So, Mr. Mayor, if it takes me more yeah. than three minutes, can I complete it? Thank you. 
these are my public comments. Hello, Mayor Council. Unfortunately, I tested positive for COVID last night, and I am quarantined, so you get to hear my comments today in Rana's voice. Thank you, Rana. Regarding the, pro regarding the proclamation opposing federal military aid to oppressive government, this is only on the agenda because anti-Israel lobbyists from Ann Arbor came to council twice asking for it. Blaine Coleman has a well-documented history of pursuing his own city government in Ann Arbor with the same agenda to no avail. He saw us as an easy target to help in his political agenda and you obliged. In his public comment to our council at the last two meetings, he was clear in his intent to use us as a pawn for his own political agenda. Did anyone ask our Palestinian and our, or Israeli residents what their opinions were on this proclamation? Were any Hamtramck residents asked for feedback before it was published? It's alarming to me that it was so simple for a non-resident to get something so controversial on the agenda. City governments have little to no control or say in what our federal government does. This proclamation serves no purpose but to divide our community for an outsider's political gain. If, we've truly concerned, if we're truly concerned about oppressive government, we should begin all city meetings with a land acknowledgement for the native peoples that called the soil Hamtramck is on home long before we stole it from them. Regarding 2325, Councilwoman Amanda Joukowsky's resignation, while I'm really sorry to see Councilwoman Joukowsky step down, I've seen her mental and physical health decline over the last few months, and I hope this decision helps reverse that so that she is better able to shine like the outstanding community organizer and member that she is. Best of luck, Councilwoman. I look forward to seeing what you do next. Thank you for your service on Council and your continued investment in our beautiful city. 2326, Max Garbarino's contract for city manager. I'm concerned that the salary listed in the contract is almost 20000 higher than the published salary. If there was room in the budget for an increase of that magnitude, then it should have been published as such. We're in the beginning of the budgeting process for the next fiscal year, and this 20000 plus, 20000 plus the proposed pay increase for the council mayor totaling another 73000 or so add up to just under 100000 It's been mentioned that departments in City Hall have important budget requests like additional full-time salary or important items like new vehicles and updated equipment. I think ensuring our city has the necessary tools and personnel to run efficiently should come before raises for our city manager or mayor and council. Raises, raises should only come once the council members and mayor and council effectively work together to balance our budget in a long-term sustainable manner. 2327, for Park Conservancy permission to improve 3110 Goodson, I support the development of 3110 Goodson to better connect Veterans Park and Keyworth Stadium. 2329, approving the development and sale of 11738 Sobieski to John DeAngelis. I support John and look forward to seeing the project develop. And the rest is for public hearing. That is it for Lynn Blasi. Have Dean Smionescu. Smionescu. Yes, that's good. <laughs> From uh, off McPherson Street in Detroit, you have three minutes, sir. All right. Hello. Hello. So, uh, I am a ISA certified arborist. I run a small tree company just outside of Hamtramck, but I'm 48212. That's fancy words for saying I'm a professional tree guy. Uh, so I came here to talk about trees. I, I eat, sleep, and breathe trees. Well, we technically all breathe trees, but you know what I'm saying is I can talk about them for a lot. I'm around. I know the trees in Hamtramck. A lot of people don't like the trees in Hamtramck, of which there's not very many. So there's a lot of things to talk about here. But what I'm going to say is that we need more trees. Definitely. Every single summer is going to be hotter. Hmm. Hamtramck already is a heat island. Okay. Each summer is going to be the coldest summer for the rest of our lives. So we need to plant smart, and we need to act quick. And right now, with the IRA, there's so much money that's going to be available specifically for communities like Hamtramck. But we've got to plant the right tree in the right place, and we need coordination between all the departments to do so. So often I see new sidewalks be put in, and they grind the roots out. And then the next storm, the tree falls on the house. Now... Who's, who's at fault here? It's not the tree's fault. It's the concrete guy. You know, we can coordinate 
and, and make Hamtramck a, a, a true urban, urban canopy. And especially with the Greenway, I mean, it's like we got to do it and we all just got to work together with arborists, with professionals. There's a lot of other arborists out there who want to work with Hamtramck to do it. So that's what I'm here to say. I could talk about the benefits for a long time, but I bet you already know. Reduced pollution, you know, you actually, if, if someone post-surgery has a view of a tree out of a window, statistically they heal faster, all right? <laughs> then maybe we wouldn't need 50 pharmacies if we had some more trees, right? Um, one more quick thing. I think it's pretty cool that there was a proclamation in solidarity with Palestine. Thank you. That is Thank really you. awesome. Another thing I want to say with the businesses and, and the Greenway, we need, bike, we need bike racks. The only business I know of that has a bike rack is the weed dispensary. I need to go to the grocery store. I rode my bike here. Thank you for having one in front of city council, but no one's going to stop to go into the businesses if they don't have anywhere to park their bikes. I ride around all the time and I have to go onto a street sign, which is illegal, which then impedes people walking. You know, if we set Hamtramck up to be able to ride bikes, people are going to use them. And then the parking issue isn't going to be nearly as big of a problem. Yeah, we still got to drive when it's zero degrees out. Of course, we're going to drive to the grocery store. But the rest of the year, we just need a little bit better infrastructure. Thank you so much for your time. More trees for Hamtramck. More trees. Yes. yes. Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to add that... Uh, I believe Dean is involved in some conversations in regard to a grant we're looking at writing right now um, that would bring potentially a million dollars worth of trees. Um, hopefully we're successful. It is a grant, but <coughs> going down that avenue. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Blaine Coleman from Ann Arbor. Three minutes, sir. I want to thank the mayor, I want to thank the council, and I want to thank the city administration for this uh, pioneering resolution, the first city council in the nation to say something which in America is very revolutionary, that Palestinians are human beings and they have certain unalienable human rights. No matter what anyone says, their human rights are not negotiable. You don't have to beg for permission. They have, Palestinians have, certain unalienable human rights. This is a revolutionary thing to say in America, and this city council has said it. More precisely, the city council has said the Palestinian people have the right to self-determination. <clears throat> the right to self-determination, of course. It says that this city is against, this city council is against occupation. Of course you have to be against occupation. Everybody's against occupation of Ukraine, right? You have to be against occupation of the Palestinian people, which results in so much mass murder of Palestinians. This resolution says that the city council, the city, is against military aid to oppressive governments. Anyone who reads the news, what's happening to the Palestinian people? If it's not repression by the apartheid state of Israel, I wish somebody would tell me what it is. This is a terribly important resolution, and you know what? The next city council might very well be Dearborn City Council, because Dearborn has a mayor who introduced a resolution specifically against military aid to Israel two years ago while he was a state legislator in Michigan to his enormous credit. And another legislator also, um, Abraham Ayash, joined him in that resolution. So it should not take too much trouble, if you're listening, Dearborn City Council, it should not take too much trouble for you to pass an even stronger resolution that very simply says, we are against military aid to Israel. Anywhere else in the world, it would be a no-brainer. It would be pretty easy. We are against military aid to Israel. That state commits the crime of apartheid. Human Rights Watch says so. That state of Israel commits the crime of apartheid according to Amnesty International, according to Black Lives Matter movement, according to South Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
City Council in Hamtramck and the City Administration. Like Blaine said, you have taken a monumental step towards a better world. Not just a better Hamtramck, but a better world. People who pay attention recognize that this state, United States, pays four billion, upwards of four billion a year, for simple genocide that's happening in Palestine. Two days ago, the settlers barged in, burnt many, many businesses down to the ground near Nablus. They killed people. They blew things up. This is violence, which we enable in the United States, which American tax dollars enables in Palestine. We want that to stop. The stand that you've taken against violence, the stand that you've taken against militarism, is extremely important and it will save lives. And I want to say that I respect you and I take my hat off to you because it took a lot of courage and a lot of sincerity and a lot of humanity to put this on the record. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Israel is an apartheid racist state. It has been broadcasted by just about any organization that does human rights work. Israel is butchering Palestinians, literally butchering them. And Palestinians are just human beings like you and I. They could be broken. We need to help them. We need to help them because we're human beings, because we share one planet with them, and we don't want our hard-earned money to go to maintaining this kind of violence on a people that just want to be left alone to live their lives. I thank you again. I really don't know how to show my appreciation except to say you've done incredible, incredibly important job. And I have, since I was very young, been fighting for the rights of Palestinians. I have worked in Palestine. I have seen young people being shot and killed. My own student was hit against a wall of stones until his head broke and blood gushed through. Anybody who has seen those things will not spend one second thinking whether I should or not say no military aid to Israel. Of course you should say no military aid to Israel. Who can say send military aid to anyone when they're butchering young people and old people and people of all kinds? I thank you and I appreciate your effort. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Whoever was bringing the tribe to clap for me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bill Meyer, I'm proud of resident, three minutes, sir. Uh, oh, you want to wait till the end? I'll wait till the business over the talk, all right? Okay. Thank you. Greg, you want to speak Greg Kirchner from Kniff Street, three minutes, sir. Hello, Council. I just wanted to update the Council, the Mayor, the City Administration about the workings of the Hamtramck Public TV. Uh, we have received some statistics for the six months of operation. We have been on air 24-7 for half a year. Uh, the statistics are from Meta, uh, which uh, runs Facebook and is uh, also complicit in the YouTube channel. The Comcast 19 is mostly for the local area, but the streaming uh, channel that we have is worldwide. And some of the statistics here, age groups. Our biggest uh, uh, viewers are uh, between the ages of 25 and 34. Then 35 to uh, 44 is the next group age. And it goes down where the smallest group age group is 14 and below. Now, it's interesting to see in what cities we have audience. Of course, our biggest audience is in the city of Hamtramck. The next is in, the, in Detroit. I well, assume it's north of Hamtramck. The third largest audience is in the city of Warren. The fourth largest audience is in Southern <coughs> Heights. And here we have a surprise. The city with, with the 
fifth largest audience viewing uh, Hampshire Public TV is Silhead, Bangladesh. <laughs> the sixth place is New York City, seventh is Roseville, eighth is Dearborn, and ninth is Ferndale, and on the tenth place is Sterling Heights. We just picked up the top ten uh, uh, cities with the largest audience. Now, when we go to the nations, we are nation we are worldwide. Of course, our biggest audience, 93% of our viewers, are in the United States. The second largest audience is in Poland. The third largest audience is in Bangladesh. The fourth is in Canada. Fifth, United Kingdom. Sixth, Yemen. Seventh is Saudi Arabia. Eighth is United Arab Emirates. Ninth is Austria. And the tenth is Morocco. So uh, in, the, in those six months, we have developed to the point where we have one and a half million of subscribers. The, the, those, I mean, not million, thousand. And uh, I would like to have one and a half million, but, <laughs> but we're we working to towards that. You need more minutes? With, you with, need one more minute? You can have. Well, probably this is the most important. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Gulani, you didn't put your address for you, Ham Kramer President? No, I'm business owner. Okay, welcome to. Come on. And also, I'm part of the DPA. Okay. Okay. My name is uh, Dr. Shamir Golani from Golani Dental Center. And uh, Joseph Campo is uh, 132. I don't know the address. Um, I don't write letters you to myself. You just know how to drive there. I, yeah, the car takes me there. Um, <coughs> the reason I'm here tonight is, oh, and also I'm part of the DDA, uh, the board member of the DDA, Downtown Development of Hamtramck. And uh, the reason I'm here today is to have you guys um, for the building of 9350 Joseph Campo for the tax abatement uh, to help that building to be flourishing and um, you know having a nicer place and also the city will be making more money by having more workers in these buildings so it's not just the property tax which is going to still be paid but after the renovations are done, uh, we, we would like for it to be stopped. So, and because there's a grant involved. If we don't get that abatement, it's not me. Milo doesn't get the abatement, then he's, not gonna, he's gonna lose the grant, and then the building will not get fixed. Is that right, Mike? And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Is it? John Butner? Bittner? John Bittner. Close. John Bittner. Mm -hmm. Pen was running out on you. Uh, yes. Jacob Street, Hemtramck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three minutes. Hi. Hello. Council and Mayor and City Manager. I have, um, I'm also on the DDA and I'm also on the uh, board of the um, museum. But for the DDA, I would like to promote the acceptance of the proposition that Milo for the building on 95, no, 9350, uh, Joseph Campo. That building was <coughs> horrendous. I was in it before uh, they got it. There, uh, you can't imagine how awful it was. You would step on it and your feet would go down. It was. It was, it was in a horrendous shape, and the fact that somebody is willing to renovate it is amazing, and it's going to make our city street just that much better. So for that, I hope that you, you consider um, accepting his proposal, which he'll still be paying taxes, as I understand. It will just be not additional taxes for that number of years. I also would like to, in co, um, together with the museum, we have a women's history, um, women uh, hungry for history series. Women of Hamtramck is going to be on Thursday, March the 23rd, 
at the museum, and I hope that you all could come and, and uh, see that and learn more about the history of the women in Hamtramck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Hussein, does that just say Hamtramck for your address? Is yeah. that what you wrote? You have my address for record. <laughs> I do, but say it for the record. Yeah, Hamtramck, permanent resident. All right, thank uh, first, you. I'd like to applaud the council for supporting the proclamation of uh, condemning. We didn't condemn Israel, we condemned every occupying nation, but hopefully, yeah. next council year, you condemn Israel by your name. Uh, Israel is an occupying force, they are occupying Palestine, the UN admits this, the USA admits this, and I, I know nobody hates occupation more than Bengalis with Pakistan yes. was occupying <laughs> Bengali, so I, I'm happy that you uh, followed common sense. Uh, what Israel is doing and occupying and killing is, is very bad. Like if a Palestinian kill a Jew, they go and they demolish his house. If a Jew kills a Palestinian, nothing, maybe a few years and he's out. It's, it's a racist regime. Uh, also regarding the parking for the uh, uh, businesses, I just saw the map. There's a very good suggestion, it's Lumpkin. I take Lumpkin every day, it's practically empty. No cars there, no parking, it's, it's like a deserted street. Why don't you, in addition to Joseph Campo, allow people to park there for maybe 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, and at the same time, for bikers who don't like to avoid cars, they could go down or lock in. They have two choices, and this would be a good compromise for everyone. Uh, and even you could turn Lumpkin into maybe it's already a commercial neighborhood into a commercial uh, district. Businesses will sprout there and open business, make more income there. And uh, about the rentals, a lot of people they don't uh, report their rentals. I think if you create a program, maybe you uh, levy a thousand dollar fine on people who don't report their rentals. And whoever reports them, you give them 500 or 700 as an incentive to report people who are in their properties without uh, re registering them. Even if you talk to the city, uh, to the, I mean, the school board, because they have, they get money from rentals, I don't know, maybe much more than the city gets. So they could chip in some money and you make a incentive program to record these rentals and the city makes more money and they have more rental units on record. Uh, regarding the building, I'll talk to it in the public hearing. You have more uh, information about it. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Faye is Isa from Joseph Campo. Okay. <laughs> الآن بدل ما كنا خمسة بالمعاشة غالي الآن واحد فقط الكاشير فقط لا غير يقدر إنه يغيروا خط لا لامبكن في أماكن بعيدة من البزنس يعني مضطر إنه يدور لنا حل أو ما سكر المحل شكرا. Okay. So he's saying since last Monday when um, they started giving tickets to his no, customers. Not, not Monday the Friday. It doesn't matter since they started giving tickets. His uh, customers started to avoid coming to the to the place, and he reduced the number of uh, workers from five to one. And he's suggesting that uh, what just Nasser said, to just move it through Lumpkin, and to avoid uh, Joseph Campo. Otherwise, he's going to have to close his business. That's what he said. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Walid Kennedy from Yemen Street. Three minutes. Hello, uh, Walid Kennedy. I'm here for the Joe Lois Greenway. I think the killing a lot of businesses in Joseph Campo, especially for Hamtramck City Market and uh, Yemen, uh, Yemen Cafe and Chiba. Uh, for the parking, I mean, they're taking a lot of space. As I've seen in Detroit, they have, I think, about seven feet and a half. But in Hamtramck, that 
the size of the pipeline is 12 feet and a half. This is a lot of space. They're killing the road itself. The cars next to each other going. I mean, we might have an accident sooner or later. Uh, I, be, I was parking my car, my truck on Joseph Combo next to Yemen Street, I mean Yemen Coffee. Uh, my mayor, one of my mayors is gone because they were too close. I think if they move it to Lumpkin, this is the best route. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ali Zagheri, also Joseph Campo. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Ali Zagheri. I'm owner for Yemen Cafe Restaurant. Uh, I try to speak Arabic, it's okay? It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll try English and Arabic because my English is not good. But uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm one of the owners for the business right here, more than 30 years. Uh, me and uh, other business over uh, years of Congo. And we do good business before, and we try. Uh, we said more welcome for anything, help the city for like the motorcycle or uh, for any business coming, or we happy for anything you do for the city, raise up. But they have to focus for the business and for, for, for the people they are working for the business and for the residential. It's not like, uh, it's not like fear if they kill like third the street for uh, something. Uh, it's good for, for the city, but it's bad for, for, for the business, for the residential, for the, for the it's not safety for the, for the street. Let me give you an example for, for my business life. Sometime, the customer, they sit down for the table. In eye to the food and other eyes to the outside, they give us ticket. And sometimes they cancel the order and they're going to take it, carry out. If the business closed in the city, like and, and, and the business can bring more people from other states, from other cities, for 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 uh, for uh, Hamtramck. If they close or shut down, nobody come to Hamtramck. If the business like worker more than twenty or thirty people for in, inside, right now I have to take off a third in my business, like because I don't have business. Last Friday, I got more than five customers. They leave the food and they come out because they got a ticket and, and outside. Uh, I try if you can like move it for somewhere else or at least like excuse it for four foot or five foot in the middle and keep the other side free for the back inside or try do the best if you can. Please, I'm sorry, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Walid Isa, Holbrook. So, uh, I'm the son of the owner of City Market. Uh, I don't think Max come last time, and he tried to help us. But, like, like my, my, the business is down and nobody come to us and uh, I want to say like if they can try to help us to avoid the line because I'm going to shut down the business so thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Bill Meyer, Hello friends, it's been a long time. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, anyone can address the uh, council. It does not have to give their name or address or identify themselves. The only Hamtramck ordinance is uh, number 517-2009-2 and resolution 2021-64 in the Open Meetings Act of PA 267 address this issue of public comments. It's not, there's nothing in our city charter about it. Not any of these state the public has to say their name or address when speaking to the mayor or council. So if you ever say that, people do not have to say their names. I mean, it's nice to do it. I'm sure most people will do it, but they don't. 
But the, no, I'm but not talking asked, about you. Well, I asked. Well, I love them. I'm not talking about you, Ronnie. Yeah. You did a great job. Thank you. I'm talking about at the last meeting that I watched on TV, that someone said, you have to say your name. You don't have to. So you should know the rules. You made the rules, so you should know. It was the previous practice, that's all. Yeah, so uh, we, it's, it's good rule. practice, yes, but it's not a rule. Yeah. So, wow. So I missed a couple meetings. I'm sorry I had to miss it. I'm the uh, winner of the longest attended meetings in the oh, sure, uh, so. 22 years. I've been coming here. And... Uh, so when I'm gone for two weeks, one of our council members resigns. The city wipes out half the car lanes in the Yemen community for bikes. You hire the city manager that you had planned to hire since day one, months ago, pretending to go through some application process, and you decide to triple your salaries. That was a good one. Uh, did anyone vote against that, by the way? I don't think anyone did. Okay. That would be a headline that you'll never see. Council votes against pay raise. Uh, so maybe you forgot that uh, we're a poor city, that it's a poor city in Michigan probably, and uh, that for over a hundred years, no one has ever asked for triple their rate wages. I mean, that's, I think you took this job knowing what the pay was and you committed to the city. So um, I'm, I'm surprised about that. Uh, so about the proclamation that you finally put in front of the council, uh, which of course I support totally a Palestinian struggle I have for all my for decades, Twyla and I have been in a group called Women in Black. We've been in Jewish Voice for Peace. We started both of those groups. We're totally opposed to the way the Palestinians are treated in, in their land. But we never brought a resolution before this council because we were worried it would tear the community apart. I'm, I think you're proud, and I mean, I think you're courageous for doing it. But I think this was done by outsiders who are unaware of the sensitivities of the city. And even though I agree with them politically, there are many other issues besides Palestinians in the world. We should stop all funding the war, not just the Palestine. Can I ask for one more minute? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, like, for example, uh, how about ending the 61-year uh, blockade of Cuba? That would be a good one. Let's have a yes. proclamation of that. Yes. Okay, how about stopping the sanctions on Iran? All right? Okay, there's many of them. So I know where these people are coming from. I work with these kind of people all the time. We're <laughs> activists that want to change the world for the better. But they came in here not knowing the politics of this city. And we lost a tremendously valuable council person. I don't know if that's a reason or not, but I, I have a feeling that it's something to do with it. Because of the unawareness of the politics in the city. We have to find a way to work together and work together. You can't come in as individuals and not know where people are. You've got to work with people. Uh, I, uh, so I'm very disappointed about that. There's a massive earthquake in Syria and Libya that our country is denying uh, to break the sanctions. They won't allow anybody to go in and help these people. Our country has funded many wars, like a hundred since, over a hundred, since the World War II. We've been in many violent situations. So it's not only Palestine and Israel, it's many places in the world. So I suggest you put on another resolution, or you should rewrite this one, to say end all funding of wars from the U.S. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, now we move to the consent agenda, and this is approved in a single motion with no discussion. Uh, item A, approval of minutes from the February 14, 2023 regular city council meeting. B, approval of pre-approved expenditure date ending February 28, 2023. C, approval of invoice register date ending February 28, 2022. It's written 22. It's supposed to be 23. I think that's 23. a typo. Yes. Uh, it's a typo. I think. It's supposed to be 23. The resolution 2023-22 approving appointment of Gamal at Turkey and Mohammed at Duais as alternate members of the Assessor Board of Review. E resolution 2023-23 acceptance of engagement letter with Miller Canfield. Second. <coughs> uh, you just have to approve it. All in favor? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Aye. All right. No objections? No. All right. Do you want to do the... Yes. Oh, no? Okay. Yes. Gentlemen, you want to step up? Yes. It's both the same. But when I say state your name, obviously state your name, okay? Please raise your hand. I state your name. Muhammad Abdais. Jamal Sufi. Do solemnly swear. 
Yeah. So it's clear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. You will support, that will support the, the Constitution of the United States. States. And the Constitution of the State. And the Constitution of the State. And that I will faithfully discharge and faithfully the, discharge the duties as the duty as an alternate member, alternate member of the Assessor's Board of Review. Of the Assessor's Board of Review. Of the City of Hamtramck. Of the City of Hamtramck. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. <laughs> According to the best of my Congratulations, folks. Uh, now we move to the public hearing, and we have resolution 2023-24, approving uh, obsolete property rehabilitation exemption for Shellman Silk Shop, LLC, uh, 9350, Joseph Campo. Can I get a motion to open the public hearing? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All right. Mr. Mayor, yes. uh, I have not only Ruben from the CED department for the presentation, and we also have Milo here who's seeking this presentation. Um, I don't know if you want to do the presentation before and then open it for the hearing, or do you want to do the hearing and then open it, have them? It's I think we'll start with the presentation. Okay, Ruben, you want to start with Milo, you want to come up too? Or? Uh, sure. <sighs> I'm going to have come up with you yeah. I'm going to pass out a... <clears throat> Thank you. PowerPoint. I accidentally <laughs> uploaded the wrong one earlier today. We've been too fast. All right. Um, so I just want to say thank you all for letting me be a part of this conversation. Um, this is about an incentive for redevelopment on Joseph Campo. Incentives are an, a key tool for the city for developing the city how you, want, how you want to see it. And so it's an important conversation. I also know it's a controversial one, and so I appreciate you all giving me the opportunity to help inform your, your conversation. Uh, next slide. So um, basically, I'm going to start by giving you an overview of what the incentive program is, and then talk about the specific application that we have before us right now. So the law that allows this is called the um, uh, Obsolete Property Rehabilitation Exemption, or Act. Um, and basically, it's a targeted incentive in order to achieve your developed development outcomes in the city. So if you want Joseph Campo to be renovated, you use these incentives to help those renovations happen. Um, what it allows the city to do is to freeze taxes at the current rate and property owners can rehabilitate without having to pay the extra taxes that would normally come from improving your property for a certain number of years. That can be from one to 12 years. Um, whoop, not quite yet. <laughs> um, the, these exemptions can only be granted if it's commercial property, um, if it's declared obsolete by this obsess assessor, which is to say that basically it's unusable in some form or another. Um, and that it's already within a district that the city has decided is a target district. And that the uh, application be approved by you all. So you all get the final say over whether these actually pass or not. It's not just a kind of blank slate. Um, your particular policy, you already have one on the books. It was passed in September of 2020. So the policy that's stated in the city says that the base exemption is for seven years. So if an application comes before the body and it is qualified, it checks all the boxes, you should start the exemptions at seven years. And then there's a point system for adding additional years, depending basic, mostly on the level of investment. 
So in the city, um, the, with the policy that's stated, if you basically put $250,500 into your investment, then you should be eligible for a 12-year abatement, according to the policy that is currently on the books um, for ham chairman. Um, and the important thing to know about this, though, is that it's also revocable. So if someone comes before you and they say, we're going to do X, we're going to do Y, we're going to do Z, and they don't actually follow through, then you all have the, you have the right at any point to bring it back, to take it back, if they're not fulfilling their obligations. So, next slide, thank you. Um, so this is just a diagram to help kind of explain how the taxes work. Um, so the first box, the current taxes, that's what the property is bringing into the city just as it is right now. The, there's a point at which the property is rehabilitated, it's renovated. Um, normally, that would mean that the taxes increase, that's, um, but because of the abatement, for however many years you want, that increase doesn't go into effect. So the person continues to pay their original taxes. And then finally, after the abatement ends, then the taxes go to what they would normally be based on the value of the property. So this particular application that we have before us is for 9350 Joseph Campo. It's at the intersection of Joseph Campo and Florian. Um, they are asking for a 12-year abatement. They, um, the storefront has been uh, vacant since the mid-2000s, and uh, it has not been bringing in any taxes to the city up until these current property owners purchased it in 2019. So from 2008 to 2018, this property was either under, like, was not being paid taxes on or was under foreclosure. So the kind of idea that there's a kind of base of taxes that are being paid on a building, in this particular case, it doesn't actually quite apply because you were getting zero for this building. Um, the current owners purchased the property in 2019. The assessor went and looked at it, declared that it was obsolete in 2020, uh, 2022. The project that they are proposing is for a tap room. Um, they will brew ales and lagers and also use the space. Um, at, well, it will be available for events um, for associations and community organizations. Um, they are also planning on making it cultural um, and kind of artistic. They're going to have um, every two weeks have an alcohol-free night to be inclusive. This is the kind of vision that they've outlined. And I'm sure Milo will speak better to this um, in just a second. Um, the key pieces of this, um, I think, for this body to consider are that the application is for a $680,000 rehabilitation. That's a, a lot of money for a storefront in Joseph Campo. Um, it is only going to happen if the city council approves some kind of abatement tonight because $250,000 of that is coming from a Michigan Economic Development Council, uh, Corporation grant. So of their $680,000, $250,000 is coming from MEDC, but it's contingent upon this council approving some kind of local support. So this project will not happen if it does not get some kind of local support. And finally, um, the, this project will create 15 jobs in the process of its re rehabilitation um, and four time for full-time employees. So these are just a couple pictures of the property to show the state um, that it is in. So, and this is that same diagram, but with the numbers specific to this application put on it. Um, so the um, taxes that the property should be or that are being paid on the, on the property right now are $3,650. Um, after the renovations are, are done, it's estimated that uh, the taxes would be $8,150. So for whatever period an abatement is issued, um, $4,500 will not be being collected by the city, but $3,650 will continue to be um, received by the city, in addition to whatever um, economic benefits the business brings through the income tax for employees and collateral benefits <coughs> to other um, businesses in the area. Um, after the abatement ends, the, it will then be paying $8,150. Uh -huh. 
So I just want to speak very quickly about this Michigan Economic Development Corporation grant that is a key part of this application. Um, so this is something that has been promoted by the Community and Economic Development Department. Carolyn has, I believe, sent out an email to the council before, put it on Facebook. This is a huge opportunity for Hamtramck because it's the state giving money to rehab older buildings um, in, the, in the city's downtown. And anybody can apply. So if you want to take over a property um, on Joseph Campo and make it beautiful, turn it into the ideal kind of business, you can get this free money from the state. But it requires local support in order for it to happen. So it's, it does require um, a little bit of kind of buy-in from the city. But it is a really cool <coughs> program, and it bypasses the city in a, in a way, and that business owners can go directly to the MEDC and get this money um, for these rehabilitations without requiring staff to do a bunch of extra work. So, and there's, it's unlimited, which is uh, a very exciting thing for us. So, the final one. so our recommendation um, is to um, approve this for a 12-year abatement. Uh, there's a number of different reasons why we came to this conclusion, even though there are also important questions that I'm also going to raise for you all. Um, so the $680,000 investment is well and above the $250,000 investment that's in the current policy that says um, that it qualifies it for a 12-year abatement. Um, it's an important signal to the Michigan Economic Development Corporation to say that Hamtramck is willing and excited to partner with developers. And uh, it maintains this property as a tax earning property. It keeps a business going. And given the, the property's history, that's an important um, benefit. And generally, it improves the downtown, which is the idea behind um, creating this incentive program in the first place. Um, yeah, and then I, the final is kind of just like an abstract idea a little bit, but this challenge of older cities, how do you develop, redevelop in your downtowns? Suburbs, they have space. It's easy to do new builds. That's not the case here. So you have to think about what can we do to encourage people to come back to the cities where things are more challenging. And that's what this program is. Thank you. Thank you. No, no question. Part two of the Milo. Yeah, part Milo. Two. Uh, Milo. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just want to say one thing. Um, I've said it before, uh, Ruben is an intern for us. Um, as you normally know, Ms. Carolyn would be presenting. She has a, She's on a short leave of absence right now. Um, Ruben stepped up, in my opinion, did an excellent presentation. Um, he's leaving us this week. I tried to convince him to stick around, but he's continuing on with his education and fi finishing his graduate studies in the is it dissertation? Yeah. He's finishing up his dissertation. So maybe we can attract him back. We're going to try. But if I could just get a round for him, because he's put in a lot of work for us. So thank you. Yeah. Thank well, you. as long as he gets that $5 million grant, <laughs> <laughs> put the finishing touches on it today. All right. So thank you so much. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, I'm Milo. I'm a red, uh, resident of Edwin Street, and I've lived in Hamtramck since 2017. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Um, I guess I don't really have much to add to what Ruben said. Um, you know, this is a project that we've been working on for three and a half years now. Um, my friends and colleagues are here. Will, who's also a 10-year resident of Hamtramck and one of our partners, Jubeck and John. Um, and we've been putting our heart and soul into this. We spent the, the last four years renovating five separate vacant units on Joseph Campo. Um, and we haven't come to you guys for that, right? That's something that we did and we really enjoyed doing that. And John and I are out there hauling refrigerators up to second story apartments at 10 o'clock at night, you know, after work, because we love this city and we are passionate about making it better. The reason we're coming to you right now is because we've been able to secure this grant after three and a half years of work. and. This project is impossible without it, frankly. It's just a huge task. You saw, I think, the pictures of the building. Um, you know, that was back, actually back in uh, 2019 or 2020 when the, the water was still coming in the building and we had to stop that. But um, uh, anyways, it, it's been a huge process for us and we're here sort of at the, hopefully the final steps um, and, and looking to you guys to help us make this happen. I'm happy to answer any questions or comments, um, but we're very appreciative of your support. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have a question sure. for Milos. So, uh, Mr. Milos, uh, 
this, uh, I know you have been working on this for the last three years, and uh, I, I like to help out someone who's trying to develop, trying to help the communities and, the, and uh, especially commercial industries. And I'm, I'm a passionate about it. I'm a, myself a business owner. But do you have any other uh, ones that, uh, that you're planning to do? Because if you use this, if you get this approved, and then you ask for more, and we continuously do the tax amendment to another project after another, you know, then mm -hmm. we're going to have to open the door for everybody, you know, and it's, it's, it's uh, where we're going to get a lot of questions from the communities. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand that. I mean, I guess I would say sort of two things. First off, like I said, this is our sixth project in the last four years. Um, so we have five units that were formerly vacant, all of them for over 10 years um, that we've renovated and we have not come to council asking for anything on that. Um, so that's, that's the baseline that we've set, right? Um, and I guess what I would say is, is we don't have any, you know, I guess we, to answer your question directly, we don't have any other plans to come back to you. Um, but we've saved this for sort of the big project. Like this is a much bigger project. This isn't an apartment. This isn't public thrift, which was one of the, mm. the stores that we worked on. Um, this is a, a big project that like we just, between the, the four or five of us, we don't have the resources to, to handle um, without your support. So um, I guess that's point two. And maybe I have point three, which is, these are important, as, as Ruben, I think, pointed out, these grants from the MEDC are really important things that people in our community should know about and should be looking for. Um, and, you know, I do think that tax abatements are valuable in that they can bring additional investment from the state of Michigan, right? So in this case, I think the overall value of the abatement is $54,000 over uh, a period of 12 years. Um, and the MEDC is investing five times that. Right, so by foregoing that revenue, um, there's a huge multiple that we're bringing into the community um, through that MEDC grant. So I think these are important and interesting tools. They should be used selectively. We're using them selectively. Like I said, this is the first time we've asked for it in six renovations. Um, but I would encourage you to think about this uh, in this case. Milo, another question. So do you think it's, it has to be 12 years tax abatement? That was my question can, too. <laughs> will it be? Yeah, I mean, so I, I'll, I'll be completely upfront with you. The, our term sheet with the state of Michigan doesn't say a specific number of years. That's the expectation that they have communicated to us is 12 years. If we went back to them and we said, the city wants to support us, but they don't feel like they can do the full 12 years, and it's 10 years, I think that that wouldn't be a huge issue. Um, but, uh, you know, it is important, like it is a ironclad requirement that we have this abatement. Otherwise, we will not get the grant and the project, unfortunately, will not have. But you do realize that it's, as uh, Ruben said, that uh, if you don't complete it and we can revoke it? A hundred percent. We understand that. that's, that's, oh, huh? okay. Yes. That's all. Thank you. And I just want to um, add on to uh, Milo's answer about the, if, if, how do we know that more people won't come and continue to ask us? Mm -hmm. So there's a, important safeguards in place. So the state actually has a requirement that's like, 5% mm -hmm. of the property value of the city, I think, cannot, like more than 5%, you can't abate. So it's like, there's, there's a, there is a maximum for how many of these you can give out. And the state reviews these applications after they're approved or disapproved um, from this council. So there, it, there are safeguards in place. And the second thing is, it's also, I, I, I wrestled with this and I thought about this question. Of, is this a slippery slope or is it the building of momentum? Because if you have more people that are coming to you because they are, redeveloping these build these buildings in downtown Joseph that is that could be seen as they're trying to take more money from the city it could also be seen as achieving the very thing that you're all mm -hmm. pass this policy for which is to encourage development in the city so Ruben uh, I, I, in terms of application processing um, how hard it how hard it uh, was uh, let me repeat that was it hard to do these applications uh, with the state of Michigan well, 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 it's a very, I know that it's a paper trailing. I, I work with the papers every day, so it's a lot of paperwork to do. Because I'm wondering why uh, one of my council colleague, Asumari, who bought a, a very old building, which was Shopper's Row. I shopped when I was young, that Shopper's Row. He didn't ask for a tax abatement or he didn't apply for that, you know, because that's a big project. That's a bigger building than yours. Mm -hmm. And he has invested a lot of money into that building. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, I don't know telling him to ask, ask him. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, like, yeah help him out to... because he's still not done with his internal uh, renovation, you know. Right. And that's a bigger building. Right. And that's one of the buildings that stands out. 
and he done a good job with our site. But I mean, just to you know <laughs> chime in on that. I mean, I think that would actually be a great candidate for a grant from the state of Michigan in a tax abatement, right? Because that is yeah. a huge that and the building on Belmont, the corner of Belmont and Joseph Campo. Those are probably the two biggest buildings, I would say, in downtown Hamtramck that are still empty. So, I mean, that's what these tools are for. They're for sort of these selective cases right. where you have, like, very, you know, buildings that you had to put a lot of work into and a lot of money, and it's just there to bridge the gap so that a project that's otherwise not possible becomes possible. All right. <coughs> that's all for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can do the public? Yeah. Now the you guys can discuss afterwards. Yeah. yeah. I have a uh, first public hearing comment from Lynn Blasey. Hello again, did we, Mayor. Did we open the hearing? Yes, yes, we already opened it before the presentations. Yeah. All right, what was the time? <coughs> Remember, you asked if that's what they wanted to do. I know, what was the time? Oh, 8.23. Hello again, Mayor and Council. I support giving businesses that are improving our city tax incentives and trust that the mayor and administration will approve this request. Recent surveys of the DDA district concluded that we have a desperate need for more public restrooms, specifically between Holbrook and Conneth, and a solution to that is more restaurants. It's my understanding that, it's, that this microbrewery and community space would help fill that gap and allow more shoppers the ability to shop longer without having to cut their trip short to find somewhere to relieve themselves. This would also be the first microbrewery in the town, and it is a big relief for more of the exact same businesses opening all over the town. It is also my understanding that the business owner is requesting that this is requesting this as a match to a MEDC grant. If they are unable to secure a match, they will lose their MEDC funding, and this project will not move forward. As cited in the attachments, this property has not been a reliable source of income tax for the city. For a while, and a tax abatement will not negatively affect our budget since the money hasn't been there anyway. If you're thinking that 12 years is too long, <coughs> I propose amending to 10 years to be more consistent with the preceding mayor, precedent mayor, and the council set with ZBOX last fall. Overall, I support this request and again urge the mayor and council to approve the request so the development of this derelict property can move forward sooner than later. And I do have one from Andrew. One of you guys, Andrew? No? Okay. Andrew Kokitz, um, business owner 2750 Yemens. Dear Hamtramck City Council, I am writing to express my strong support for the property rehabilitation exemption for Shulman Silk Shop LLC located at 9350 Joseph Campo Avenue. By granting the OPRE, we can ensure that this new development will bring positive outcomes to our community and downtown's economic growth. The proposed project's goal is to create a community-oriented atmosphere that focuses on fostering connections and conversations while respecting the diverse needs, beliefs, and cultural preferences of all community members. This approach will ensure that all visitors and residents feel welcome and included. The property's rehabilitation is expected to retain or create approximately 15 jobs, including construction employment. Additionally, the renovated development will be open to the community on weekdays as a venue for arts and culture events, creating new opportunities for engagement and connection. Granting the OPRE to Shulman Silk Shop LLC shows our commitment <coughs> to economic growth and development, making us a more attractive partner for future projects with this Michigan Economic Development Corporation. By investing in this project, we can create a multiplier effect, increasing <coughs> foot traffic and attracting new businesses to the area, which in turn can drive economic growth further enhance employment opportunities, and generate revenue for the city. A significant benefit of this development project is that it won't have any negative impact on the city's budget, as it will maintain a neutral property <coughs> tax impact for 12 years. On top of that, the proposed rehabilitation of the property will bring in much-needed tax revenue for the city, creating a mutually beneficial outcome. Thank you for considering my input. I am in full support of the approval of the OPRE application for the Shulman Silk Shop, uh, the proposed development project offers a variety of community benefits, such as increased access to cultural and entertainment options, neighborhood improvement and beautification, and additional tax revenue. These outcomes will have a positive impact on the well-being and growth of our community, making it a more dynamic and welcoming place for residents and visitors alike. Sincerely, Andrew Kopietz. And that's it for emails. Um, Mr. Nasser Hussein. <coughs> Oh, 
So just some information. Uh, you don't have to give seven. You don't have to give twelve. You can give one, two, three, four, five, six. They just tell you this, so you have the wrong idea. It's up to you how much you give. Second, the grant. I read the requirement. There is no requirement for giving them tax abatement. They could still get the money from the state, and without the tax abatement, they could get a, a 250. First, is it fair? Like, he's getting free money from the state, and he's going to fix it. And he wants tax abatement. Let's say somebody borrows money, and he comes and tells you, I want to fix this building in Joseph Campbell. Would you give them 12 years abatement? With the free money, he should have more incentive to, uh, to pay the taxes in full. Uh, I want to show you this one here. That's the upstairs apartment. We just posted like two weeks ago. First thing, I assume it probably cost them more than fifty, sixty thousand dollars to fix the apartment this way. But their taxes didn't go up, their assessment. It went like everybody else, like a few thousands. I don't know what's wrong with the assessing department of uh, Hamtramck. I knew that when you fix something, your taxable value has to go up, but the, theirs didn't. Uh, second thing, is their water bills. As I understood from the previous uh, city manager, she had everybody switch to automatic reading. Theirs is still estimates. And they estimate their water consumption to zero, zero, zero. I wonder how they fix the bathrooms without water and everything. And to make sure that they got the permit without water consumption there. It tells you that some people in Hamtramck have connections. Like this gentleman here, you know, the DDA came here for him, the emails. They want to save themselves money. You know how much he would save himself? If you don't give him the abatement, he will pay, as they said, $8,000 in real estate taxes. If he rents the upstairs apartment for $1,700, and he rents downstairs for at least $3,000, that's $60,000, $70,000 a year. For the $60,000, $70,000 a year, you can give $8,000 to the city. And if he thinks $8,000 is too fair, and instead of giving him 12 years, he could easily appeal to the uh, property tax board of review, and they're going to work for him. It doesn't make any sense to give him this uh, this tax abatement. So many, mashallah, he bought the building. He spent probably much more than this gentleman spent on it. Did he ask for a tax abatement? It doesn't make any sense. No. If he thinks he can't proceed with this project, I think he bought it for 150000 And I'll probably find him a buyer that will buy it for 150000 And will fix it without costing the city anything and will pay the taxes. Uh, when you see, they tell you it's going to cost 600000 for fixing. If you look at the uh, resolution, this is fake numbers. Plumbing, 118000 One floor, is there any way or shape or form you have to spend 118000 to fix the plumbing in one floor? It doesn't make sense. In, uh, painting, almost $20,000. Does it make sense somebody will paint one floor for $20,000. They just inflate these prices to make you, oh, he's going to spend so much money. The two fifty dollars is more than enough to fix the first floor. It doesn't make any sense. If you insist on giving him a tax abatement, I think you should lower it on the low end, maybe two, three years max. 12 years is not fair. We have inflation. Now he pays 3000 In 12 years, 3000 will be nothing. 3000 his neighbors will be paying maybe seven, eight, nine thousand. 9000 It's not fair for... His neighbor next door paying seven, eight thousand, he's still paying three thousand. It doesn't make any sense. Please don't let them trick you. It doesn't make any sense. I know he won't lose any money. He can easily sell it and get somebody who will fix it for much less than that. Don't. You want a salary? You need the money to pay your salary. Please don't approve it. Thank you. Or if you approve it, maybe max three years. Thanks. Is it Danielle Bridegay or Bridegay? Hi, good evening. I feel awfully unprepared because I had my neighbor Bill um, drag me to this meeting. I didn't really look at the agenda beforehand, but so all I'm coming forward with today is what I heard. Um, I feel awfully confused about uh, the, the application um, that's proposed for this microbrewery, I believe it is. And some things I'm kind of confused about is understanding what it means to beautify and bring business to downtown Hamtramck and specifically microbrewery, um, understanding that infrastructure in the interior would have probably specific needs to meet a microbrewery, meaning if 
this establishment, this building becomes such like a tap room, it probably would stay a tap room, no matter the owner, no matter the business, that's what we're signing up for in Ham Um And I'm also confused about this, the cultural aspect, and I think another public comment said something about public restrooms, but we know all restaurants require you to be a guest to use their restaurants. I, so I was going there. <laughs> I don't even think that makes I hope that's the case. Um, but I'm, I'm confused about the cultural aspects because I'm obviously someone who lives in Hamtramck who is very connected to a specific um, age group and a specific type of, I guess, target group that a lot of these bin businesses seek to target, especially a place like a tap room. And I don't know if it is a community, would be a community benefit, or if many people in the community would actually um, want to see a tap room in downtown Hamtramck, especially if there's so many families here. Uh, there are so many other issues on hands, like recycling and things like that. Um, and the fact that not many people know about these microgrants, that the applicant said so himself, um, that I think, you know, there are some resources that they probably access to be able to work on this, uh, on these, on the application that a lot of people don't even have the education on or the access to. And I think that's something that the city council could probably consider is how do you provide the education to small business owners um, who are from Hamtramck to actually be able to apply for similar grants and, and so forth. Um, the other thing I want to do was kind of tie this to, it, it gave me a thought, tying this to the, the Greenway proposal as well and thinking about how we heard so many business owners come up today talking about how they're going to have to close their business. And I actually um, have a background working for nonprofit organizations like the ones that we saw today that are about urban development. I've done some research on um, past urban development projects as well. And a trend that you see is that these businesses close and what type of businesses open up? Businesses like tap rooms. Um, businesses that are catered towards a new target residence, basically. Businesses that are catered towards people from not the community uh, and so forth. So I think that, as someone said earlier, you know, when you're applying for this sort of uh, opportunity, you have to be selective in what you're applying for. And I think as well, the, the city council needs to be selective in who they give it to. So that's all I have to say. Milo would like to uh, add to a public comment? Is there anybody else? Nope, you're the last okay. one. Um, I've got to check out that. All right, well, come on up, Bill. Okay, bye. I'm sorry. I, 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 just, I didn't realize. It's okay, Bill. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, first of all, I uh, commend the young man here for all his ambition in fixing buildings up in the city. We certainly need that. And we all have talked for years about bringing business to the city. I think that's a great, uh, great project. Uh, I'm not crazy about the fact that it's a tap room. Uh, I don't think that's going to appeal to like 80% of the people in the city. But uh, uh, we are going to bring back a lot of the folks who left because the uh, bars are closing down. So now we'll get another bar back and uh, go back to the good old days. I don't know. Uh, I really think that we have to be more sensitive about the cultural aspects. And I appreciate what Danielle said. Uh, uh, another bar on, uh, on Main Street is on the Main Street of the city is not what we need. We're, we're finally getting the bars down to where they should be, respectively. You know, like, I think we have 40 left or something like that, but uh, another one we don't need. I, I wish he'd come up with another project for that building. I, I appreciate it. You know, maybe a restaurant. We could use a restaurant. There's lots of other things we can use that can appeal to everybody in the city. But a bar is going to have limited use. And we're going to have to bring people from out of the city to use this thing. No question about it. We need people to come in and spend money. That part's good and all that. But as far as the... <coughs> As far as the uh, 12 years, what's the 12 years you asked for? 12 years? Yeah, okay, so I know he wants to make money. I mean, you don't go into business without wanting to make money. That's why you do it in the first place. Let's be honest about that. So let's get as many years from you guys as we can. 12? Okay, let's start with the highest I can get. 12, let's start with 12. No, okay, it's 10. No, okay, I'll give you four. I'll give you two. Well, the point is, this is the poorest city in Michigan. Why are you taking money from the poor people in this city so that you can build another bar for people who already live in the city? I mean, seriously, think about it. Thank you. Milo? Yep. Okay. So I just want to address a couple points. Um, so first of all, yes, the prices are extremely expensive. They're also highly specific 
costs, right? So there's specific types of paint, there's specific types of plumbing, all these sorts of things that go into this that make it more expensive than, than your average than your average project. <coughs> and actually, the latest that we got was actually a fifty thousand dollar increase in our budget due to inflation that's happened since this budget was put together in 2022. So the numbers we're coming to you with are actually about $45,000, $50,000 lower than they'll actually be. And that also does not include our equipment, which is probably gonna be a significant expense as well. Um, I guess uh, I also wanna point out, uh, or just respond to the comment that it's not a requirement. I mean, I, I'm happy to show you all our checklist from the MEDC. It is, in fact, a requirement that we have city support, city financial support. Um, like I said, totally upfront, honest, is not a requirement that we get 12 years. Um, that said, it is a requirement that we have some sort of city financial support. Um, I guess to address the comment about a commitment to the community, um, I guess the first thing I'd say is again, like I've lived here for six years. Um, Will has lived here for 10 years, so we are community members and we're building something that we want to see in the community. Um, and I understand that not everybody you know, wants to see that, um, but we think that it can it can be an inclusive space. We are dedicated to, you know, not just having alcoholic events, but events that you know there's not alcohol uh, present at, like like I think um, uh, was presented by Ruben, um, and we'll also um, be serving you know food and, and non-alcoholic beverage. Well, non-alcoholic beverages that are made on site will be available. Um, I guess that's really all I have to say. Um, I think I've. Okay. Yeah, we understand. Yeah. Let's, let's minimize the timing. Yeah, two hours a little bit. I don't know. It's real agenda. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. All right. Can we have public comment? If we can motion to end. Yeah. Make a motion to close the public hearing. I will make a motion. Second. All right. Now, discussion. We, do we, we need to open motion? again to open the discussion? You need to open. Uh, we need to make a motion to make a motion to uh, discuss. Open. To I'm I'm making a motion to uh, discuss. discuss regarding this matter and the council. Second. Third. Oh, what's for start? No discussion from me. Well, uh, I just want to say something small. Uh, I, I hear both sides. I hear Bill. Uh, what Bill said. I heard what uh, Nasser said. But other hand. We all make a commitment during the election time once more business to be in our city. And, and that purpose, we need to willing to help those people that are coming up for the business ideas and, you know, the intelligence. So I'm proposing council to do some sort of, uh, you know, amendment to fulfill their need and grow our business to the city. Mr. Chair, Go ahead. I want it to be um, an accurate from the attorney. So, Mr. Attorney, do they need uh, the abatement from the city, or it has to have uh, a tax abatement in order yeah, to reviewed, in order to get the I've spoken, uh, the I've with opera and, grant? Yeah, I've, I've reviewed the paperwork and everything. Absolutely. So, I can understand why Mr. Hussein doesn't understand the, the legal aspects of it um, because it's more complicated than some normal things. And, as was discussed, but absolutely, they, they do need a financial commitment from, this, commitment from the city. Uh, 10 years would be the same as 12, but um, uh, you want to show them some significant uh, uh, contribution from the city so that make sure that the state is on board as well. All right, so. So when I, uh, when we had the Z-Box uh, issue, um, I negotiated with them and everyone else did that uh, our city is in need of more investments, but at the same time we need more revenue. Um, and so we pressured them to lower the number of years as low as we could to the point where they said any lower than this will leave. And the lowest was eight years uh, for them. And that's a 19 million um, project um, that we brought with 75 uh, full-time jobs and some part-time jobs and stuff. So uh, I spoke with uh, Milo about this, and this is part of the condition from the state that they need some kind of help. It doesn't have to be 12 years or 10 years, something that they can go by to help them, something that can be 
uh, satisfying to both parties because I know this is going to open the doors for more businesses to, you know, follow your footsteps and ask for more. And I said during the ZPAX issue that we need to help our residents as well, not just the big companies. So uh, I think the council can uh, suggest a number of years that can help them move with this project. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be that high. Mr. Chair. 12 or 10. Yes, sir. So this public hearing, we have to take the, uh, take the decision as a resolution today? Today, yeah. Okay. So I'd like to offer maximum four years tax break. So that's the, my proposal. I can go. Well, so you have to motion it, and we have to decide. No, discussion. still, still talking. I still, still talking. Yeah, I'm still talking. We nobody talking. Somebody yeah, talking? Yeah. Yeah, I like the, the gentleman. Thank you, and he came to him to make you the investment. But look, this issue. They got some different between Z box. When we have a big bracket. I'm sorry, but he motioned the discussion has to only be. No, we guess no, I didn't not. Oh, you didn't just discussion. No, no, we guess, no. we guess no. discussion, yeah. Suggestion, yeah. Yeah, yeah we got some different between this place when we will, uh, we need to, everybody come to Hamtramck to buy a lot of more business. But they got some different. When we have the big bracket, they cost over $20 million. And some more small, uh, small place, it costs 100000 in the same issue. That's we going to open the door. They get many, many people to own Hamtramck. They buy every year three, four place commercial. And we didn't give them a tax for people. They, they built the new houses. And we come the taxes like almost 12,000. We didn't give him break at least a thousand, two thousand dollars. And many people, they built a new project. Please, you got to figure it out. You have the grant, you're lucky. It's not gonna, it's not gonna lose for the taxes. Just work with the city, we work with you. It's not gonna give you, it's not gonna give you a headache. I'd like to support <coughs> this issue for two years. It's not offering. So is offering two, four and two. Uh, Someone have to make the motion, please. I'm gonna make a motion to four years, Max. The, uh, Second. Please call the vote. I think no discussion. What are you gonna do? Vote. Yes or yeah, no? Yeah, I, I have to accept with all my friends. I like to be to work with the with the people, but we gonna lose it. I have to agree with him. Thank you. So go ahead. So. Yeah. Yes. yes, yes. Yes, yes. Two times. <laughs> Councilman Chowdhury. Yes. Councilman Mahmoud. Yes. Councilman Hassan. Yes. Well, <coughs> so. Mr. Mayor, amendment to four year abatement has been approved. So if there's any. I'd like to make the motion. Yes, to vote on the motion. As amended. Second. Yeah. Go ahead, call on. All right. Call for the votes. Councilman Chaudhry? Yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Councilman Alsmiri? Uh, yes. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Mr. Mayor, am a, uh, resolu amended resolution 23-24 with a four-year abatement has been approved. Thanks. Thank you. Good luck. Mr. Mayor. Hopefully it works. All right. Thank you. Know. All right. So uh, uh, we will move now to the new business. And we'll try to move fast because... Uh, some yeah. people have some commitment to go to. Uh, so the first one is Resolution 2023-25, accepting resignation of Amanda Jakowski. Offer. Second. Mr. Yes. Mayor. Yes. Um, Councilwoman Jakowski sent me a brief message. She asked if I could read it with respect. May I just read it? Yes, go ahead. OK, from uh, Councilwoman Jakowski. Hi, everyone. Peace be with you all. I have a short message. I don't want anyone to take my resignation as a reason to blame others, fight, or walk away from him, Tramick. In fact, I encourage the opposite. Attend more meetings, join a commission, educate yourself on the political process, public policy, and more. Be involved. However that looks for you, I'll still be here too. Speak up from a place of truth and strive for accuracy. The mayor and council need public support to move the city forward. 
Whether you support with constructive criticism or a quick message to say what you think they're doing well, feedback helps create a Hamtramck for all of us. What we, the mayor, council, administration, and residents alike can do is continue the hard work for shifting Hamtramck towards teamwork and seeking to demonstrate integrity for the youth who will be our leaders soon enough. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I get a motion to... Uh, we did. So we did. Yeah, yeah, we did. We're in. Okay. Yeah. So, any discussion about discussion. this? No. That's it. All right. Can we vote on? Yes, Council. we want to make it. Did you want to say something? No. Councilman Chaudhry. Yes. Councilman Mahmoud. It is unfortunate, but yes. Councilman Al-Samiri. Uh, yes. Councilman Hassan. Yes. Uh, Mr. May, Resolution 2325, accepting resignation of a manager causing task. Thank you. Uh, next one is Resolution 2023-26, approval, uh, approval of contract with Max Garbarino to serve as Hamtramck City Manager. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, this resolution, uh, as a council president, I had a discussion with the, our council members and uh, residents and also the other candidate, a uh, most a uh, lot of complaint came to me about the this agreement, uh, contract agreement, and did not I believe follow the protocol of the council government. Also, is some misunderstanding, and also I don't want to discuss this one right now in front of uh, residents. And I want, if it's everybody okay, I want to put this one, try to table it for next council meeting because of next council meeting, I'm going to have my full cabinet is in here. If I take the decision with the three, four council members, there is a two other council member is not here. Sometime, oh, then later on, good is good, anything bad, or oh, I didn't approve, you guys did it. It's also uh, some of the thing as a councilman maybe we are not understanding. If we talk to, um, discuss with the attorney and also uh, the Max Gavrino with respectfully and come to the little better understanding and better uh, solution. Uh, I don't want to discuss right now in front of um, in the, my residence. So, because we respect, we hire our manager. I want to bring this one, both parties agree, and bring to the council, and then we'll approve it. So, due to that reason, I want to table it. But I want to also mention, last council meeting, I already request to the attorney and the assistant manager who was responsible in hiring and, and, and the HR manager, like a discussion with the mayor and subcommittee, uh, try to compromise each other, bring the reasonable contract uh, agreement to the council. So I think discussion is here. Mr. Mayor even don't know until he read it. Uh, most of the council member also did not uh, uh, know until they read it. And one council member I have a discussion with 6.45 today and calculation, it is something we need to table it and bring to the next council meeting uh, with, with the follow-up discussion with the mayor and subcommittee. Right. I, I just wanted to echo to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Hassan that uh, th this is um, totally different than what we have said, stated uh, during our a subcommittee meeting and uh, even we have previous discussions regarding this but we did not get any uh, response from the deputy city managers nor the city attorney so we're not familiar with these numbers that that, that he came up with and I, I uh, asked my mayor he was not even aware of it so we you know we need to go back and discuss this again and I mean, we, we're okay with this, but we needed to revisit this contract. This is a two years contract, not open-end contract. 
So I, I would uh, agree with my council member, uh, Mohammed Hassan, to table it. Mr. Chair, yes. if no more discussion, can I make the motion to table it? Yes, you can. Second. All right, so we'll table it to the next meeting. Yes. You have to be bought for Yeah. Well, well, you can call the votes. Yes. Yes, yes I'm just writing down the amendment. Just on the, who seconded Chaudhry? Yes. Right. Councilman Chaudhry? Yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Councilman Asamiri? Uh, yes. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Mr. Mayor, uh, Resolution 2326 tabled to the next meeting. <coughs> All right, thank you. All right, the next one is... Uh, Resolution 2023-27, approval of the Hamtramck Parks Conserva Conservancy to improve 3110 Goodson in, accord in accordance <coughs> with their Park Accessibility Improvement Program. Offer. Second. Mr. Mayor? Yes. This resolution is basically giving the Parks Conservancy the ability to reconstruct 3110 Goodson. <coughs> it's currently a city-owned uh, lot um, that acts pretty much as a pass-through from Veterans Park to Goodson and then on to uh, Kewer Stadium. Uh, it's unimproved right now. Um, I believe it's just gravel. Um, it's been uh, looking pretty shabby for quite some time. And the Parks Conservancy, in uh, conjunction with the DCFC, wants to fund the project, pave it, do the landscaping, and basically make it look nice. OK. Any <coughs> further discussion? No. Yes. Councilman Al-Samiri? Uh, yes. Councilman Chowdhury? Yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Resolution 2327 approved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Next one is to uh, Resolution 2023-28, approving of subrecipient agreement with Wayne County for the Community Development Block Grant. I make a motion for that. Second. Mr. Mayor, this is a fairly annual thing we have to do with Wayne County. For the CBDG grant, um, they're giving us 20000 towards code enforcement. Uh, it's been in the process for a while. Um, they're a little bit behind in getting this to us, as you can see by the dates on there. Um, they should have sent this to us six months ago. It's just administrative. Thank you. Any more discussion? Mm -hmm. I love grants coming in. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Councilman Al-Samiri? Uh, yes. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Councilman Chaudhry? Approved. Mr. Mayor, Resolution 2023 28 approved. Thank That's you. Good. The next one and the last one is Resolution 2023 28, authorization to enter an agreement for the development and sale of 11738 Sobeski to John Dangelis. Offer. Second. Mr. Mayor, we have. Uh, Alessandro from our CE as well, and we have Mr. DeAngelis, who, as we all know, is our DPS director. Mm -hmm. um, excited about this, that one of our department heads is looking to build and move into the city. Uh, go ahead. Thank you, Council. I'll be very brief. Um, so uh, John DeAngelis, present here, uh, is planning to build a triplex, so a three-unit um, house as part of our lot sale. So as you know, we've had an ongoing lot sale. Um, so he decided to apply and get this lot. Um, we, we, as the Office of CED, request your approval of uh, selling this lot and confirming um, the construction of this building in the next two years to be completed um, as part of uh, the requirements of the lot sale. Um, it's going to be three uh, two-bedroom apartments totaling 2,886 square feet. Um, so three different apartments, all different sizes, but uh, three uh, parking lots as well. Um, and it's really going to help the goal of the city to uh, have more uh, livable housing and available housing. Uh, and this is going to be great for you new units. So we ask that council uh, can approve this to go through and then uh, construction can start ahead. Thank you. Hey, a quick question. So he's not asking for a tax abatement? <laughs> uh, we're just. I could. Yeah. John, that's. It's called NEC. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Any further discussion? No. Councilman Al-Samiri? Uh, yes. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Councilman Chaudhry? Yes. Mr. Mayor, Resolution 2328 approved. Thank you. All right, so we're almost done. Uh, we'll move now to the reports and start with the mayor's report. I 
will make it as short as possible. I, starting with the events that we attended in the past two weeks, uh, I only could remember the celebration of the International Mother Language Day, mm -hmm. uh, 12 o'clock midnight in front of the city hall uh, with the Bangladeshi community. It was a very cold night, but it was a fun uh, gathering. And uh, uh, we had another event yesterday with the Bangladeshi community hosting one of the uh, political fig figures back home. And I was there with them until maybe 10.30 at night. So you could see that the most active community in the city is the Bangladeshi community, which is Every plus. weekend something going on. Yeah. Uh, um, other than that, I just would like to uh, thank everyone for coming tonight and staying late. Uh, I want to thank um, Councilwoman uh, Amanda Jakorski for her service uh, to our community uh, with a lot of devotion and, and sincerity and commitment. Um, we have worked together uh, very well over, over the past one year, and we always had some disagreements, but uh, we, it was minor. It was, uh, we have never taken it personal. And so uh, she, uh, she's a big loss for, for our city council, but uh, she's still nearby. We will continue to work with her, and uh, she will continue to be involved in community events and uh, uh, city affairs <coughs> as well. So we thank her and wish her good luck in the future uh, and her future plans and endeavors. Um, that, that's all I want to say. I want to make it short because um, Mr. Mayor Portem wants to leave. And we move uh, to, her, to his uh, uh, report if he has anything to say. Mr. Chair, just uh, like to say a couple of things. Yes, uh, definitely the talent uh, council Women, hardworking, well known. We are miss. We're gonna miss her. But um, health issue and personal issue, we cannot control it. So due to that reason, I accept it. Otherwise, no. It is any other reason. I I'm gonna say no. I didn't accept it. So is that I wish her good health and everything. Second, uh, guys, I have to remember, 20, I'm here 29 years. So Conant Avenue, it was the ghost town. Most of the Bengali people developed the Conant Avenue without zero tax rebate. And, and we did develop, and it is more better than the Conant business. Conant, I uh, mean, Josokampo. Josokampo has a lots of empty buildings. But Conan don't have one, maybe or two empty building. That kind of turnaround we did without any help, without a state help, without any city help. So, but still, we did a four years for the gentleman. I think is fair. As just want to show to the community, outside the community, Michigan State, everybody we are supporting the business. So another thing. If every project bring the money to the Hamtramck city, 29 years and, and over 12 years in this, 12 years I'm here, I didn't see any improvement, any money is coming. Always negative balance is going high. If money come, where money going? Everybody bringing money. Where's the money? What decision we had, bicycle lane is, we destroy the road. I didn't see any vehicle. Over there driving anybody. Somebody stealing the post, making nasty things, and, and destroying all the business in on the Jose Campo. So we don't want to, any more green, any more green. What green being? 29 years ago I was here. That time we have another ethnic people. They don't need the green. Only I need the green right now. 22 square mile, what green gonna bring us? Nothing. Bringing us negative, in fact, negative business, businessmen closing business, those kinds of things. We have to think both sides, not one side. What is the reality? Reality, 
we have to accept it. Thank you. Sorry to say truth. Mr. Attorney, if I have the permission, you still have the quorum. There is no decision to take. There's no quorum, but there's no decision to make. You're good to go. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I, I'm going to lose that. Okay. Well, um, why don't you wait for five minutes to end the day? No, there is a closing uh, There is a lot of issue. Mm -hmm. After the I have to wait for that process. Well, there is no okay. voting, so, so you can go. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Anyone else? Oh. Oh. City Council report. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway. uh, I would like to uh, uh, thank you, our city councilwoman Amanda, for serving the uh, communities and being on the council. She was a great woman. Uh, working with her was a uh, tremendous uh, learning. Uh, she was constructive. Uh, I wanted to wish her good health and end over. You know, she's still, she said she's going to be around, and I hope to see her more. And uh, as far as the uh, the bike lanes, it, it's uh, as I don't want to make a longer story. We don't want to hurt the business owners. You know, they're they're working so hard day and night to uh, take care of the family, take care of the business, and they're putting their hard work money to open a city markets, open a restaurants, to people to shop and eat. And we're trying to uh, alleviate, we're trying to take them a difficult positions with their business. Uh, I think we should find the solutions to find uh, a solution to, to alleviate the bike lanes. Uh, I would strongly suggest the mayor and the council to look into this together, and I'm looking forward to working <coughs> And. Uh, as far as everybody, uh, thank you so much for being here. It's <coughs> late. Uh, take care. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, for giving the opportunity. Uh, and I thank you, the audience, all those important conversations and decisions that we made. Uh, and I also I need to recognize, again, my own perspective, the uh, Women's History Day. I want mean, to say happy Women's Day to a strong, intelligent, uh, talented, and simply wonderful women. And don't ever forget that you are loved and appreciated by all of us. And um, I'm going to say really um, heartbreaking news when Amanda Dukowski announced her uh, you know, uh, resignation letter. But we have to accept it since it's uh, her own decision, but she will be missed. She's a great woman, a uh, nice person to work with. Uh, I'm, I've been known her for the last almost over a year throughout the campaign trail. And um, for the last few months we worked together, we have a lot of discussion, and she was a great asset, and uh, I hope she will still around by us and give us all those recommendations and ideas that she had in, on her head for future. And I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, and everyone else who was uh, presented to the celebration of our Mother Language Day. That was a really great event, and everybody's presence makes it really wonderful event. And also, I want to congratulate New York City Council. They make the announcement today. They are making uh, one of their very uh, historical streets. Uh, if someone knows about the New York, you know. 73rd Street, Jackson Heights, and one of the very known streets. They make it a Bangladesh Avenue now, officially declared. So I want to congratulate them for making such a great uh, you know, history. And uh, thank you all. This is it for tonight. Thank you. Yes. You want to say something? Okay. Go ahead. I'd like to thank everyone, all my community, to come to uh, city council to see what we have, what we do, and I am happy to see everyone come over there. At least you know what we have, what we do. And for Amanda, I work with her like one year and two months. I miss this lady. She working good. I like thank you, Amanda, what you're doing for the whole years. Thank you for everybody. Thank you. Uh, city manager report, please. Just to reiterate that the board of review is commencing again for the assessments. Mm -hmm. If you want to make an appointment, it's time to get in with the assessor and make an appointment. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Out of curiosity, they vote for adjournment. I know it's a silly vote, but they still vote. 
Yeah. Is it still a quorum? Half of the public uh, no, no it's, it's it. not a quorum. It doesn't matter. It doesn't it's matter. Not a, it's fine, right? It's not a res resolution okay. or ordinance. Just making or, sure. No. I'm like, you guys aren't going anywhere unless he comes back. Because they could have a meeting without a quorum. They uh -huh. just couldn't decide it. Okay. Oh. No problem. Uh, only two public comments. Nasser Hussein. I don't understand why you elongate this process. I mean, you should have approved uh, Max. You just delaying it. When you approve him, he'll have the incentive to start working hard. You know, when somebody is still hanging in there, he don't work as hard. So if you approve him, it's just two weeks. But you know, want to start as soon as possible. Uh, if He's it's working just harder. Money, Thanks. Twenty thousand isn't that big of a deal. I mean. It's two years, if you don't like him, you could just not renew his contract in two years. Uh, not like the old manager, you were stuck with him forever. So uh, maybe try your best to approve money. Is, is not. I think Matt is worth it. Uh, he, will, he will work harder and he's a much better choice than the old ones. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Mr. Bill Meyer? Uh, yes, hi. Um, I think you need to fix this microphone because the people can't hear people talking up here. If I go higher, yeah, it go starts ahead. to echo. So you talk yeah, into it. Yeah, it's called feedback. Yeah. Okay, fine. Is that, oh, that's the mic right there? Yep. Maybe for, for, for we can hear people. I, I'm allowed, but some people aren't. Okay. And um, also, I think you really have to consider, Council, to change that little, slight little tweak in the rules about what you can talk about at the public comments. I mean, why should we only speak about agenda items at the end of the agenda. It should be anything you want at the beginning and anything you want at the end. Can you change that at the next meeting? That would be beautiful. Thank you. Then we don't have to worry about what we say. I have to step in. You're not allowed to say that. You're only supposed to talk about the end. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Now my comments start. Okay. Uh, Amanda, we're going to miss Amanda. What a, what a tragic loss. And I think you all should consider how this all happened and uh, think twice so it doesn't happen again. Um, the bike trails, you know, I ride a bicycle in this city. I've ridden it since I've been here. How many of you guys ride bicycles? Anybody? I no. Know. So I love bicycles. I, I don't need a bike trail to know where I got to ride and all that. I don't need a whole two lanes or one lane. Of the, right. I don't get it. I mean, in, until a lot of people are biking, then make a lane. But right now, if you see a bicycle riding down Joseph Campbell, well, take a picture because it's pretty rare. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, they love it. But yeah, they love it. I know some people yeah. love it. The green people love it or whatever. Okay, so uh, I like Joe Lewis, too, by the way. He's a good guy. In the green way. They named it after him so that I'll really think, wow, this is a great project. Uh, we screwed up the parking meter thing. We lost parking spaces all up and down the street. Now we're going to lose them for the other uh, bike trails. Bike. What are you guys doing to the businesses? Ten seconds. You <laughs> start. Okay, one more minute. Can I get one more? Okay. All right, so uh, I had a couple more things. You know, being against... Uh, being supporting Palestinians does not mean you're anti-Semitic, by the way. Being against Israel is not anti-Semitic. I work with Jewish people in a Jewish organization. You all yeah. know that's what I'm telling you for. You all should know that. Okay. So oppose the oppression of Palestinian people, whoever does it. If the state of Israel is doing it, not Jewish people. It's the state of Israel. Um, thanks to Greg Kirshner for taking the greatest move videos of our meeting so that I can actually go home and see who's talking and he moves the camera and you can hear real well. Hire this guy. Pay him some money. He's doing a great job. Oh, yeah. Very great. Very nice. uh, Good luck. Okay, and uh, my gosh, I'm done. All right. Uh, one more, one more snuck in. I apologize, Mr. Conrad. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, try to make it brief, but thank you on behalf of the Tribe Park Conservancy, Detroit City FC, the survey of visitors that visited Keyworth. Um, season ticket holders and other, one of the issues they had was handicap access to Keyword Stadium. So when this issue, this issue came up, the Hamtramck Park Conservancy, as part of our goal, was to alleviate some of the costs in the city and the other stuff. So DCFC and the Conservancy, thank you for allowing us to do this. We did plan on putting in a concrete pathway, perimeter boulder landscaping to stop vehicular traffic, and then landscaping and weather permits that we'll also do for the uh, 31, for the Goodson Avenue thing. I will also be coming to you in the next few months for a planned project. We have a roughly around a $450,000 children's landscape, playscape that's going into the park this year, and a $130,000 to $150,000 outdoor uh, workout facility at the Veterans Park that will be going in this year as well that I'll be providing more details later. So thank you for everything, and 
look forward to the uh, improvements to the park this year. Thank you. All right, so we done with yes, public sir. comments. All right. We'll have a closed session now. To so make it journey, session. right? No, yes. actually closed. No. So maybe we should take like five minutes break. Okay, so like yeah. here we are voting again. This is fine? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we... We need to vote session. on the closed session. Yeah, that's yeah. what I yeah. thought. Yeah. We need to motion. Yeah. We need to make a motion to have a second and then go to the closed session. Yeah. I got, I got a motion. Or, no, they can vote. They can still vote. Not, you're not voting on a resolution. It's just that it's a. Uh, can make a motion, motion on the floor. Yeah, I got I'll a motion. motion. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor. Aaron Tinkasan will not vote. Yeah, it's a, 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 a